I've always been fascinated by Malaysia because food is at the heart of the country's culture. That is amazing. To find out what makes this cuisine so unique, the flavour and the aroma is really rich and strong. I could eat that all day long. I'm embarking on a journey of culinary discovery. This is the best curry shop I've ever seen in my life. I want to uncover the secrets of Malaysia's rich and diverse cooking styles. The noise of everything! Add flavour! <laughs> and use everything I've learned on my travels to help you transform your home cooking. This is the start of my Malaysian adventure. And I think it's going to be spectacular. My culinary expedition through Malaysia begins in Kuala Lumpur, a modern metropolis of 1.5 million located in the southeastern part of the Malaysian peninsula. As I explore the city, I'll be getting stuck into its famous street food. That's mine, that's mine, that's mine. There you go. A local chef inspires me with a Malaysian classic. Ooh, feel the beads of sweat appearing on my forehead. It's chilly, man. We love our chili. Right. And I'll use all my new Malaysian culinary experiences in my kitchen at home. Kuala Lumpur's multi-ethnic population of Malay, Chinese and Indian combined to create a fascinating fusion of flavours, ingredients and traditions. I want to find inspiration from all these diverse influences to use in my recipes back home. But I've got to start somewhere. I'm in the centre of Kuala Lumpur and right now this is Little India. As much as it might feel, smell and sound like India, this is actually Malaysia. Indian Malaysians make up around 10% of the country's population. Little India's colourful alleyways are evidence of this community's strong cultural impact on Malaysia's exciting cuisine. To guide me through the multicultural Malaysian food story is local expert Charlie Vickness, a fourth generation Malaysian Indian. Because of all this mixed diversity culture that we have our own Malaysian cuisine by itself, we are totally different from any other Asian countries. Be it the Indian, be it the Chinese, be it the Malay, it's all Malaysian by itself. That's show me more. Yeah, show yeah, me more. Okay. Show me more. I want to see more. Okay, cool, I want to see cool. much as I can. With such a wealth of influences, it's not surprising Malaysian cuisine is described as the original fusion food. But Charlie tells me the one thing all Malaysian cooking has in common is fresh, raw ingredients. I'll just show you one or two of our local vegetable. So we Malaysians, we want everything fresh. Of course. Even from food, we have our vegetables what fresh. OK, this is what we call in English, we call it a uh, drumstick. All right, so drumstick, they use it a lot. It's like similar to okra but it's with a hard skin. This is the leaf that right. you use it to make in our lentil curry. Why not? These are yeah, curry leaves. Yes, yes. When you rub that out yeah. and you smell it, it smells like curry. Yes. It smells of turmeric yes. and garlic and cumin and coriander all together in one leaf. Yes. This is another interesting leaf. We call this... I'll give it a smell. It's a pandan. Yes, yes, pandan leaf. We use it widely in our cooking. It's time to taste. Charlie's taking me for some Indian-inspired food all served up the traditional Malaysian way, on a banana leaf. This is, this is lovely, the spinach. Having it served on a banana leaf gives you extra taste, smell. The sambal's delicious. Yeah. So what's this one? I call it the Indian tequila. Sip it, it's hot. This is just pure spices, warm with turmeric. Then the curry leaf, the onions, the tomato. Helps us to detox, take care of our internal. So the whole thing really is quite holistic. It's about your whole body and your way of life. Culture, we respect it, we practice it. For me to understand the food of anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. you've got to understand the culture. Exactly. And for you guys, it's all about respect and about nature. Cheers, man. It's a good remedy for hangover as well. <laughs> Kuala Lumpur's skyline is dominated by modern steel-clad skyscrapers. And there's plenty of upmarket restaurants. 
but according to Charlie, Malaysia's best culinary delights are to be found at its simple roadside stalls. Everything you see is made here, deep fried healthily here, that's what I tell myself, and sold here. Everything smells incredibly delicious. There's curry leaves going in this mix over here. What's he up to? This guy is making our signature thing called curry puff. Potato yeah. marinated with curry powder, clamped it up, and later it goes to the deep fried station. They have a kick to it. It has a kick to it. It's like a chip butty with curry sauce, all in one place. So in here, Coriander. fresh coriander, curry leaves, all mixed together. Onion. And and Onion. Oh, and chilies. I would say it's Malaysian donuts. They got a hole in them. They are, yeah. How do you do that? Can I have a go? Yeah, yeah. Wash your hands. Wash yeah. your hands nicely. Wash it nicely. Okay. Press the hole. Can it work? Yes. That's my one. Look, yeah. that's mine. 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 Take your time. And they are what they suggest, and that is this sort of fluffy white donut texture on the inside, crunchy on the outside, more crispy than a donut, flavoured with coriander leaves, curry leaves, onion and chilli. A bit of spice in the background, really well seasoned. They're properly delicious. To get to the heart of Malaysian cuisine, I need to sample a classic. So I'm meeting up with local restaurateur and TV chef, Sherzan Leon. Hey, John. Cheers, how are you? I'm good, and you? Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice coconuts? Um, yeah, I'm going to show you a dish, oh. what's supposed to be our national dish. And it's something that we'll never do without. You can't do without it? You cannot. Brilliant. Well, let's cook. Ready to cook? Let's go. So you promised me what you believe to be the national dish of Malaysia. Yeah. What is it? Nasi lemak. It's rice cooked in coconut milk together with some sambal, which I will also show you later on. It's just that simple. All the ingredients we're using are readily available in the UK. I start making some coconut milk by squeezing shaved coconut flesh soaked in water, while Scherzen begins with a vital element of the nasi lemak, rice. We're doing shallots. You don't fry them. So you nope. don't fry any of your garnish going into your, your rice? No. Nope. Why is that? When you fry shallots, it, it really becomes nice, strong and caramelised. Yes. So that will sort of overtake the, the, the flavour of the coconut milk. Into the rice goes the shallots, lemongrass, garlic, fenugreek for an earthy aroma, my freshly squeezed coconut milk, ginger, and finally a Malay ingredient definitely worth sourcing, pandan leaves, to give a distinct aroma. There we go. The next bit is essential for Malaysians to live. It's sambal, it's chilli. Without that, we, uh, we, yeah, there'll be no purpose for living. <laughs> I love that. It's, it's true, it's I true. I love that. Um, so tell me about the chilies, because th these aren't fresh chilies. These are dried chilies that we'll be using, and you just put it in a blender. Right. With the liquid? With the liquid. And okay. once you do that, this is what you get. So that is chilli paste? Chilli paste. So for our sambal, we're going to do what? We're, we're using onions. Onions, loads of onions, because yes. that gives it a really nice flavour. Yep. Into the blender. Garlic. That's not a small amount of garlic. No. So Asian hot. food. Garlic, man. Really? Garlic. Loads of garlic in. Garlic. What are these? Candle nuts. Right. Candle nuts. Yeah. They're a waxy nut. They are available in packs in, in Asian supermarkets. If you can't find them, I think the best thing to use are macadamia nuts, because you need them for texture, don't you? Yes, we use them to sort of thicken and also give it a rich flavour. So right, now we're going to add in a bit of water. So onions, garlic, and do you want ginger? Uh, just a bit. Yep. Pop it on the blender. Once the mix is blended to a paste, Scherzen heats a few glugs of oil in a wok, along with some balachan, which is dried shrimp paste, to flavour the oil. And when the wok's hot enough, in it goes. Whoa! Now, this is the bit where, you know, it takes patience. Because we want to fry it out until all the liquid is evaporated. I'm amazed how far you're going with this, this paste. 
It really is right down to caramelized. Yes, that's what we want because that's what's going to give it that sweet onion flavor. And can I say it looks like it's splitting? Is that yep, fair Yep, that's comment? what we want. That's what we want because we want the fibers of the onions to sort of be crispy. And this is interesting in sort of layering of flavors, isn't yes. it? The first layers of the garlic and the onions come together, then the chili goes in, and then exactly. we've got the sourness coming in from the tamarind water after And then that. a bit of sweetness to sort of balance everything up. So, so that's where we're going to get to, that darkness. Yep. Now the mix is properly caramelized, it's ready to add the chili paste and some tamarind along with a splash of water. <laughs> right now in here, uh, there is this extraordinary smell of chili, but at the same time, it's the back of your throat. I feel the beads of sweat appearing on my forehead. It's Serious. chili, man. We love our chili. Right, so there's our sambal paste. And now we're going to add in the shrimps. Those prawns take very little time to cook. Yes. So let's serve this up, your plate. I've got this, which... Oh, um, you bought me a fan. A bit of banana leaf. This is what we serve our nasi lemak in, traditionally. So the rice is done. Wow. There you go. And it smells of that lemongrass and the pandan, but it exactly. doesn't smell too much of coconut. It doesn't smell too sweet. And let's serve it up. OK. To accompany the rice, a few Malaysian essentials. Sliced cucumber, dried anchovies called ikan bilis, peanuts fried in oil, and half a hard-boiled egg. We have our sambal. Traditionally, a lot of people serve it together with the rice, but I don't really like it because we use a lot of oil to cook the sambal. Uh -huh. So when you serve it together with the rice, um, the oil sort of sips into the rice. I am starving. That's it, man. Nasi lemak with um, shrimp sambal. You are ice. Can I eat some? Go, man. Top. Let me just firstly say, it's delicious. And I've learned a huge amount. A great sambal takes a long time to make. Oh, yes, it does. Now you can buy me a beer. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. A beer definitely sounds good. <laughs> I'm in Kuala Lumpur, where my guide, Charlie, is introducing me to the exciting flavours of Malaysia's multicultural cuisine. Next stop, street food, Chinese style. The best place to find it? is on a street called Jalan Alor, in the heart of Kuala Lumpur, where they cook all night. Noon, it's dead. And at this hour, you see the crowd? It's packed. Yeah, it goes up to 4 a.m. And I'm going to take you to one of my favorite stalls, just around the corner of this street. Whoa, 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 whoa. watch God. it, watch it. Hot soup, hot soup. This place, very much Chinese. Yes. But besides that, around us, there's Thai food, There's there's satay, which obviously is very Malaysian. And again, this is what you're saying about the multicultural world that you live in here. Yep. Right. Where do we start? Still fried lala. I love clams. Hmm? Many people are very, very frightened of them. Yeah. But they're pretty simple to cook, aren't they? Yeah. Now, these are good. Yeah. But they're, they're sweet. Bit of chilli heat. Soy sauce with a bit of chilli paste. And that is true fusion. It has a decent <laughs> level of spice. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Have a bit of drink. Wow. Wow. It takes, a bit, it takes a bit of time to get used to it. Squid. Salty squid, but there's curry leaves right here. Yes, yes, yes. Like I said, curry leaves is a big part in our culture of cooking. They really change the flavour of anything, you know, and they do sort of move it very gently into another place. Much with your mind of it. So you've got to try the fish. So yeah. it's cooked with a bit of, we call it asam pedas style. Asam means sour. Right. Pedas means spicy. That fish is really good. A really interesting combination. I associate steamed fish and Chinese food of being spring onions and ginger. And then I think about curry and this sort of curry, and I think about Indian food. And I don't think about it in this way at all. It, it's true. properly delicious. So, John, I hope you still have space. Left a bit of room. I'm going to take you somewhere else now. Cheers. Hundreds of hawker stalls line both sides of Janan Alor alongside the Chinese restaurants. There's an extravaganza of sights, tastes, smells, and yet more interesting Malaysian flavors. The ingredients couldn't be fresher. These are what we call a local stall. 
They open up in the night and they come lively at this time. That's lively. What's what? What's lively? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is lively. It's fresh. Like I said, everything is fresh. Ah, uh, yeah, thank you. This is dried chili, soya sauce stuff. Yeah, there's something else in there, mate. Yeah, yeah. I knew you were going to do this to me. Oh, what's that? Nothing like a bit of frog. Exactly. We call it rabbit, rabbit. Yeah. It's pretty delicious. Um, today, my friend has been a culinary extravaganza. But what I've learnt the most is that there's a group of people who are really happy that their culture has become one thing. Chinese, Indians and Malays coming together to become something completely different from the rest of the world. And that's Malaysian. I thank you, Charlie, and I really appreciate my day. Now I can see you're officially a Malaysian. I'm, a, I'm Malaysian? All I have to do is eat frog? I'm home in the UK, but I've been inspired by all the new tastes I've discovered on my travels. So using a few authentic ingredients that are easy to find here, I'm going to show you how to cook one of the tastiest dishes I sampled in Kuala Lumpur. I'm back in the comfort of my own kitchen, and I'm going to make deep-fried crispy squid with curry leaves and chilli sauce. These little beauties, for me, are the secret of great Malaysian food, because they cross the bridge. The Indian bridge, the Chinese bridge and the Malaysian bridge and bring the flavours of Malaysia all together. So, peppercorns, salt. And then that's ground together. Into that, some flour and mix the salt and pepper together. It might seem like a lot of salt and pepper, but as you deep fry things, they sort of lose their flavour, so you're really going to make sure you season it really, really heavily. Flour, salt and pepper into a bowl, and to make the batter, it's just a little bit of soda water. Soda water, the bubbles make it nice and light, and it means that when the squid is coated with this, it's not a thick batter, but more a sort of a spidery mix that comes off it. It has crispy bits. It just bubbles up a little bit, and now to prepare the squid itself. What I really want is little bits of squid which are thin, and as it fries, it sort of curls up. So open up the squid tube itself, and then just run your knife down the middle. Long, thin slices, like spaghetti. And all of that into a bowl of flour. Just drop the whole lot in, and the flour is just to coat the outside of it, so the batter sticks. Add to that our curry leaves. These things are just brilliant. You can buy them in Indian stores, you can buy them in Asian supermarkets, you can buy them in Chinatown. They're all over the place. Scrunch them and the oils come out of it. And that gets mixed up with our squid. Just mixed together. And already there's that smell, the perfume of curry. This is a deep fried squid dish, which means that I have to have quite a lot of oil. And I use a wok. I think the wok's the best way to do it. You've got lots and lots of surface area. But I also want to be able to flavour the oil. So I've got a load of garlic, and this garlic I'm going to fry slowly so it goes crisp and caramelises, but at the same time, it does flavour the oil. Give it a good squash. Even if there's a bit of skin on it, it doesn't matter. The skin goes crispy as well, and it's, it's a great thing to eat with your squid. Uh, and yes, the Malaysians like their garlic, that's for sure. Lots and lots and lots of garlic. Slide that into oil, which is not really hot at all. If you do put it into really hot oil, it will burn. So keep the oil temperature low, let it sink to the bottom. As that flavours the oil, make the dressing. It works like this. Equal quantities of sugar, lime juice and chilies. So I'm going to use roasted chilies, and they started their life like this, just dried red chilies. They went into a hot oven, about 200 degrees, for six to eight minutes, and they start to go toasty. But what's inside these dark chilies now are seeds, and those seeds are a little bit too ferocious. I'm going to use four and crack them, and the seeds just fall out. 
I've seen dressing like this being made on the side of the street in Malaysia, and they've used about 40 chilies. Well, it's just a little bit too ferocious for me. Uh, lime. And then my palm sugar. Definitely available in all Asian supermarkets. Palm sugar in. And the palm sugar now acts as an abrasive. If you don't put the palm sugar in, you don't get this lovely ground up sauce. You get more of a sort of a, a, a slurry. Then, to that, a couple of dribbles of fish sauce. I love it. I absolutely love it. I think it's a brilliant thing. Rather than using salt in dressings, that's a lovely, lovely thing. Yum. My squid, which I've done earlier, coated in flour with curry leaves, gets dropped in to the batter. Already, the place is starting to smell like I'm back in Malaysia. You miss it after a while. So used to walking down a street and smelling garlic frying or chilies roasting. And there is food absolutely everywhere at all times of day. And the inspiration for this dish came from late at night, a couple of beers, quite hot, and a bit of fried squid. And, and for me, that's, that's where the best food comes from. This is, this is sort of the stumbling over something, finding something new, finding something interesting. The garlic now will make the dish that little bit more special. And now start to add the squid. If you could smell this right now, you'd be as excited as I am. And as soon as it does start to spit at you, it means it's ready, because it means the batter's opening up and because the water is coming out of the squid. And look, this little squiddy, fried, crispy bits. It's funny looking at this little wok with oil in it, and I consider that as you walk along the streets in Malaysia and you drop into those stalls and have fried donuts and bits of crispy pastry, that the woks they use are about 10 times the size. I don't want to place it, I just want to drop it. Dressing, perfectly pungent. That's quick, that's delicious, and it's deep-fried squid with curry leaves and chilli dressing.